Hi and welcome to Defemorembe, your daily ephemera inspiration in December. My name is Luisa Heinzel and in collaboration with 49 Dragonflies, I'm going to show you some easy ways to make your own junk journal ephemera. Today's prompt is wings and labels. Perhaps you know me, then you know that I like to use the unusual things to put into my junk journal projects. I have some ginkgo leaves here that I've already dried and I would like to use those as the wings of today's prompt. I already have a label here on my desk um, only for my imagination because in the end um, I would like to try to make my own labels. And I will also not use my original ginkgo leaves um, because Defemoremba is all about making your own things and making your own ephemera. So I'm trying to show you a way how you can make those ginkgo, um, those ginkgo wings without having ginkgo leaves. Um, another thing is these ginkgo leaves are really special for me. They come from my own ginkgo tree. <laughs> I have a really, really special ginkgo tree in my tiny house here. I um, have brought a ginkgo seed from Rome a few years ago and I've just put that into some earth. And um, yeah, uh, I didn't expect anything, but um, some months later I had a ginkgo tree. And these leaves are really special for me. At the moment the tree hasn't any leaves and so yeah, you know, it's a special thing. So I'm trying to paint my own leaves here with some watercolor. I um, have used some really cheap watercolor paper because I wanted to show you that this project is possible even if you only have some simple supplies. Um, you can try that also on some thicker white paper if you don't have watercolor paper. I think mm, in the end it's not so important that you have the perfect watercolor ginkgo leaf. If you now think I'm not a watercolor expert, please don't leave the video. I am a totally beginner with watercolor. Normally I'm using watercolor to make some splatters to my project and that's all. But please try to challenge yourself. I did that here as well and um, I had a reference photo from Pinterest next to my desk to get the imagination of the colors and where the darker parts and the lighter parts have to be. And as you can see, you can recognize that it is a ginkgo leaf. It's not the perfect thing, it's not a masterpiece, but enjoy your time while you are trying out new things. That is what I want to say with this video and yeah, with the words that I'm trying to bring out here at the moment. Um, you can also, of course, take a real ginkgo leaf as a reference if you have one, but um, as you could see in the beginning, those real ginkgo leaves are way more muted, not so extremely colorful when they are dried. Mm, and if you use a reference photo from Pinterest, you have a way easier job to get more interest to your painting as well, because the contrast and all that stuff is way more extreme on those watercolor pictures on Pinterest. Um, this took me really long. I think I've worked for two hours on this sheet of these four ginkgo leaves, but in the end I was really relaxed and really happy with the outcome of this. Um, I've splattered some uh, splashes here and there in the end to make it a little bit more interest, interesting. Sorry, And on one of those leaves I've tried out what will happen if I use a, a brown pen and make some lines to make it more interesting but um, I only did that on one of the leaves because that was not so my my cup of tea. I, no, cup of tea is the right, the wrong <laughs> the wrong sentence for me uh, for this. What I want to say, sorry, do you know what I mean? I didn't like it so much, and um, so I did it only on this one leaf to try it out and decide that I don't want to do that in the future if I will paint some more leaves in the future as well. And um, if you want to have some darker areas, 
um, on this little stamp of the leaf, um, you could use some uh, darker watercolor, of course, but you can also um, use a black pen and then um, smear that around. I mean, it has to be a water-soluble black pen, of course. And if you don't want to use your original painting, you can make a copy like I did it here. I was really surprised how different the copy came out. I printed it out in different sizes, two different sizes. And to be honest, I liked the copy even more than my original. So, yeah. <laughs> of course, you can also play around with Photoshop a little bit um, to make that more like you want it if perhaps the colors didn't turn out um, like you want them with your original painting. Here, by the way, is the next letter for the giveaway. If you never heard about the giveaway, please check out the info box. Every information that you need to enter is there for you. To get an imagination of what I want to do, I used my original ginkgo leaves because that was also the starting point for my idea. When I started this project, I had only the real leaves on my desk and I thought I can make some butterflies out of those leaves. And to get an imagination and also to have a reference, I've put the original leaves there to see which combination I had first uh, with my original leaves to get that uh, same arrangement with my copies of the watercolor painting. Um, I've arranged everything here and as you can see I've also cut more than one or two of these leaves and I will make uh, a whole bunch of these ginkgo leaf butterflies today because I want to have the chance to compare my work. These leaves are all a little bit different Mm, the color combination is different with uh, yeah, each butterfly that I'm creating here. And this way, when I make more than one or two, I have the chance to compare that and to decide what I like best for my future project projects. If I want to do this again or try another kind of leaf and make a butterfly out of that, I have the chance to compare that. Here you can see that some of them turned out really contrasting and really dark. Some are lighter. And also when I have more than one, I have the chance to play around. Look at this, for example. This is not what I want to do today, but this would be a wonderful background to put a label, to write a date or something like that. If you put three of them together like this, you will have a really cool pansy blossom. I really like that. And yeah, I had 10 or 20 seconds where I thought, ooh, let's make some pansies. <laughs> but then I thought, no, we will go with the butterflies and we will save this idea for a future project. But yeah. As I said, if you have more than one, you have more chance to play around and to try out different things. Um, perhaps take some photos uh, of your flower arrangements, in this case, for the future to remember it and so on. So these butterflies, of course, need some kind of a body. I've just taken some more watercolor paper, scribbled around with a water-soluble art crayon. You can use the Faber-Castell gelatos for that or those Marabou art crayons. I've tried to get a really vintage brown. I think um, that matches the rest of the colors really well. And then I just freestyle cut out some bodies for my butterflies. Mm, you can, I think cut them really randomly because mm, it doesn't need to look like a real butterfly body in my eyes because um, the wings of the butterfly are leaves. Why uh, trying to get a really realistic body for this butterfly? I think that's not necessary. Um, I've cut them all a little bit different to create more interest to my single pieces. And then I'm ar arranging them here um, so that I can see how that will look in the end. Yeah, just cut that out and be careful and attention, please. <laughs> Here's the next letter for the giveaway. As I said, all the information is down below in the description box. And if you perhaps now think, oh, 
this is really wonderful but um, I am not able to um, paint those watercolor leaves or I have not the time to do that or I like Louise's uh, watercolor painting so much <laughs> <laughs> perhaps it's the fact then i have a little surprise for you because today there's a little freebie um in the info box i have made um these watercolor um, ginkgo leaves for you as a printable freebie you can find the link down below in the description box and you can download that for free on my buy me a coffee page um on this page there you will find a little section that says pay a fair price that means that you have the chance to spend some money to me if you don't want to to do that please just write zero euro and you will get this freebie for free of course it's a freebie it's of course um up to you if you want to donate some money um to my channel um you don't have to do that yeah you can decide that for yourself i don't uh, i just wanted to mention that because for some people this buy me a coffee page is uh, some kind of com confusing um so yeah hopefully that makes sense what i i'm talking here so um this stems of the leaf originally i wanted to use those as the feelers for my butterflies but then i've decided that they are way too strong too massive and uh, i didn't like them so i've used these little guys here normally those are meant to um yeah the people who make those paper flowers or fabric flowers use use them for this inner part of the flower but they are also really great uh, great feelers for butterflies and um so i'm using these um here i'm just sticking them to their place with some washi tape mm, and the best way you can arrange those feelers is by crossing this um string that these things have uh, on the back side of the butterfly um then these things will overcross each other and they will stay in a really i would say realistic way um on the top of the head of this uh, little guy here then i thought the feelers are okay but i want to have this project more artsy more outstanding more bam do you know what i mean so i've decided that i want to give those butterflies some fluffy elements and for that i've chosen those white feathers mm, and here i'm trying to find a cool way to arrange that so that this looks yeah realistic and artsy at the same time no i know that doesn't look realistic but mm, i wanted to have this realistic feeling for this mm, so that you can touch something when you put this into your journal later Suddenly I came to the idea that I could use um, this feather uh, by cutting it into half and use one part for making the feelers more extreme and more touchable and the other part can peek out from the bottom of the wings. So um, first I tried it to do it like this um, so that this white uh, things from the feather come out on the top but then I thought <clears throat> that looks a little bit like I have forgotten uh, to <laughs> to cut the feather th there. Um, these white stems of the feather were too massive, too naked, too yeah. They mm, looked uh, they they seemed to be some kind of plastic or that stuff. That was not not what I wanted. And then I came to the idea to just cut the feather like this so that I have the chance to put the bigger piece to the bottom of the butterfly and the other piece to the top but now uh, these feelers have something of this feather material left so that they don't look so naked so uh, you will see in a second what I mean first I'm gluing this uh, bigger parts of the feather because I was sure that they go here to the bottom i've just fixed those with some washi tape mm, i didn't use glue for this because with washi tape you always have the chance to rearrange those feathers later if you don't 
like them or if they are too much you could um, take off the washi tape and remove the feathers completely if they don't match your project when you put this ephemera piece into your journal later and you think oh uh, that doesn't match anymore uh, then you could remove them or you could also um, put them to another um, place there on the backside of the butterfly this other thing here I've taken and then I have, you you know, moved this uh, feather thingies like this so that this comes out to the top. And um, now I was really happy with this because these little fluffy th things from the feather now are giving the feelers of the butterfly way more interest. This looks way more harmonious also with the... Um, feathers on the bottom and this little guy I've just glued with some bookbinders glue to hold it in place there. I don't want to move my feather feelers later. They have to stay in the right position and so I've decided um, not using washi tape but gluing them directly there where they have to go. That takes a time until it's dry but um, if you have more than one uh, you can also, yeah, take a cup of coffee like I'm doing here, wait for this to dry and while the first butterflies are drying, you can do the next. So um, I've done that with all of those uh, guys here. I've just cut the original feelers from my watercolor painting and then I've added um, the feelers in the way I've shown you before with my new idea with the feathers. Um it takes the time to finish these things up, but I think this is also a really relaxing thing to make a bunch of ephemera at the same time. Originally, I wanted to use this label here. Um, I had that on my desk for my imagination of the proportions of this project, but then I've decided that it's too small for me and that I also want to show you a way how you can make your own labels and especially <clears throat> making the labels in the right size for what you have done before. These butterflies are really, really big and I want to have this label also be not too small so that you have the chance to write something on top later when you put this into your junk journal. I have just taken some um, coffee dyed paper and I'm bringing this to the same size or nearly the same size. I'm eyeballing that and um, now I want to give this a little bit more interest and vintage feeling as well. So I'm spritzing a mixture of um, Distress Oxide ink, vintage photo refiller and water. Um, that gives me this really cool effect for my background. I'm trying to get this really randomly to my um, paper. And after this is dry, I am giving this label a little frame just by scribbling around a little bit with a water-soluble black art crayon. This is the Marabu art crayon. It's, yeah, as I said, a water-soluble oil-based crayon. You can smear that around with your fingers really, really well. You can control the intensity of this frame really well with such a crayon and distressing such a label with, a, with um, this crayon, of course, is really fast, way faster than using Distress Ink or something like that. And the effect is also a little bit different than with Distress Oxide ink. It's more rough, more, hmm, I would say, it's a way, um, yeah, you would say, back to the roots of distressing or something like that. So I've positioned my butterfly where it will go later to decide where I want to stamp something here now to my label. I'm stamping notes and date because I think that's a really nature, um, not natural, uh, neutral, <laughs> sorry, neutral thing to put into a journal later. I wanted to have these uh, butterfly labels really versatile so that I can use them in many of my projects and you always need notes in your journals and you always need a date so I think note and date is really really cool <laughs> to stamp on this of course you can stamp what you want you could also stamp some random numbers or what you want and here is the next letter for the giveaway 
All the information how to enter the giveaway is down below in the description box for you. So please check that out. You can win something really cool. And um, yeah, let's shade those butterflies a little bit to give them a bit more dimension. I think the leaves themselves have already really a really good contrast and this three-dimensional optic. But the body for me was a little bit too flat and I wanted to bring that out a little bit more. Um, the feathers are really outstanding as well. I mean, this looks really cool when this is on a junk journal page in the end. So um, let's try to get that a little bit... Um, yeah. Um, uh, how is the word in English? Arg! I want to make this really extreme so that it pops out. I don't know the English word. In German, it would be übertrieben. I mean, it's over, way over the amount of shading that you normally would use if you would paint a butterfly to a watercolor paper. I hope that makes sense. Um, I've used uh, my water brush and this water soluble crayon that I've used before as well to shade this. You could also use a water soluble pen, the Stabilo All Pen also would work really well. You could also use some watercolors, of course, for this shading uh, step as well. Um, if you would like to print out the freebie of today, please make sure that you use a paper um, like, for example, matte photo paper, where you print this uh, watercolor leaves. Uh, because if you want to wa walk, yeah. Louise, sure, walk. If you want to work with water later, you have to make sure that you have um, paper in your printer that allows you to work with water. Otherwise, the ink will bleed out if you uh, put water to a really yeah cheap or normal copy paper. Wouldn't work for this if you want to shade um, your butterflies as well. So here you can see me um, finishing the other pieces. Um, and I really enjoyed this process. I really, I was really proud of myself, <laughs> I have to say, to find this idea to use those leaves as wings. I know that is not a, a spectacular idea or a new idea. Of course not. I think you've all seen butterflies made out of ginkgo leaves. But um, for me, this was new. And this is what I want to say if you have something that is new for you, please be proud of your own result and have, um, uh, to be proud of what you have created. Here I'm showing you how this can look if you put that to a junk journal. By the way, the paper in the background in this journal comes from 49 Dragonflies online shop. If you want to check that out, I've put the link of her shop down below in the description box, of course, for you. So... I hope you like this project. Please also check out 49 Dragonflies YouTube channel today to see her ephemera piece that she's made out of today's prompt. See you tomorrow. Be creative. Thank you very much for watching.